All right, we're on the air, guys. So the question, and this was on the M-Step last, last year, explain why lakes with limestone or calcium carbonate experience less adverse effects from acid rain than lakes with granite beds. You don't need to write this down, but this is where we're headed today. Why do lakes with limestone and calcium carbonate don't get affected as much as those with granite? So, here we go, guys. Now, acid rain is created by pollution, basically, mixing with rain and then precipitating out. As you can see here, you can get acid partic particles and gases. You can get acid snow and acid rain. Anytime it mixes with water, it can rain out of the atmosphere. Now, when they're talking about acid particles, that could be hail, that could be sleet, any form of precipitation. Now, the gases that mix with the with the um, with the water in the atmosphere come from factories and power plants that burn um, fuels that have nitrogen and sulfur in them, which includes trucks and cars at times, especially diesels. Diesels have sulfur in their exhaust. And if you go over to the Family Fair at 76th and Clyde Park, you will see there's called ultra low sulfur fuel. And all new diesels have to be able to run with that fuel. Because again, it cuts down on the amount of pollution that goes into the air. Even though a diesel will run forever, it's a dirtier form of um, fuel when it burns. So you get pollution rising up, mixing with the water, and then raining back down as acid, um, hail, sleet, snow, rain. And sometimes these particles can just be dirt coming out of the air. Now, if back in the old days, and I don't know if it still holds true because I don't go to Illinois that much, when we used to drive by Gary, Indiana, the sky used to be pink because of all the pollution being poured out of the steel mills. And where I lived in Illinois, if the wind changed, you could actually smell all that coming back downwind. Um, now, some of these particles don't have to be acidic either. What they found is they took samples of snow in the high Arctic around Barrow, Alaska, which is the farthest north as you can go, melted it out and found pollution particles from factories in China and Russia that have blown across. You got to realize that in this world, everything moves because of the wind, and some of these particles can stay up in the air for a long time until something precipitates them out. So, moving along, here's what happens. These are the pollution particles. All right. And what will happen is the sulfur trioxide and the nitrogen oxide will mix with the water and you get sulfuric acid and nitric acid. All right. Yep. So, like, what's the ice for? It can be that what they're saying is this can be. Nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, any nitrogen compound. That's a good question. Now, 
as you saw, guys, when we did this in the ass in the, the put the baloney in these two acids, the the baloney totally disappeared in the nitric acid, and in the sulfuric acid, it basically became leather. So these are two of the most destructive acids that can come out of the atmosphere. That doesn't mean to say that you can't have CO2 go up, mix with water, and come down as carbonic acid, which is kind of similar to acid and pop. Any oxide that goes up can mix with water and come down as an acid. And depending where you're at, the pH of that can be 5.6 or lower. Remember, the lower you go, the stronger the acid. Go and recording's back on. Okay. Here's a map of the United States where acid rain as of 2007 is a, is a consideration. If we draw a line right about here, this is where it's green is not much of a worry. Now, why do we have all of this out this area? Right. Which way does the wind blow usually? west to east. The wind direction is this way. Most of our industries are here in Illinois, Wisconsin. So a lot of your industrial manufacturing is this direction, so the pollution is going to move this way. Now, you see some pockets. Here's a good example of a pocket right here. That's right around Pittsburgh. What's Pittsburgh famous for? Steel. 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 And so there's some steel plants there that can cause some problems. Now, you notice here Grand Rapids is in the light, light yellow. And here's the deal. A while back, they were going to make Grand Rapids drivers or Michigan drivers get their... Um, cars tested for excess emissions, which means you would have had to get them inspected, fixed, and permitted to drive. But that was because all the pollution from Milwaukee was blowing our direction, and we were paying the price for it. Um, you look down here, Alabama, there's a center of manufacturing. You got a lot of manufacturing in the, in the uh, what they call the Rust Belt, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and so you got a higher in mounts here. As you can see, Maine is in the caution area. That's because, again, the winds are always blowing this way and not this direction. Not a lot of manufacturing out west. You can see a couple of pockets. Here's Denver and that's because it's a metropolitan area that does have some manufacturing but also a lot of people and cars. All right, continuing on. Now, here's the global areas of concern. Um, the United States, again, is doing a pretty good job of cleaning things up, but again, if you notice, it's the eastern United States because the wind moves this way. And you can pretty much see what happens here. Europe has a lot of manufacturing. Things move this direction. Now, who's the most polluted country on Earth? China. China. Look at their big red blob there. And again, you can see, if you go to Beijing, ever get the chance to go to Beijing, you will see people wearing masks. Every room has a air filter in order for people not to breathe it in. The last week or the week before, they showed a video of just the pollution rolling in like a giant cloud and covering the city of Beijing. So, now, right down here, in this area is the Ukraine. That's where Chernobyl was. Everybody know what Chernobyl was? 
radioactive. Nuclear power plant that melted down and released a bunch of radiation, and the radiation did travel all around the world and eventually got back into Eastern Europe because of the winds. All right, so those are the areas of concern. Basically, again, pollution mixing with um, rain. Now, if you look here, all of China's pollution is going to move offshore into the ocean, so the ocean could get <coughs> technically a little more acidic. All right, here is what happens to plants. They get, I guess a good word for it is, they get burned, they get weakened, and then that leaves them susceptible to insects and disease, and you can kill off whole forests because of the acid rain. Now, once again, what I've said is the United States is doing a very good job of mitigating their pollution, but it's hard to get it 100% clean, so there's still work to be done. So you get direct damage to leaves and roots and leaves the trees susceptible to insects and disease. Not sure why that didn't come across. And I'll stop. Recording's back on. All right. We're not going to worry too much about this. Well, we're not going to worry about this one at all. It's a little too complicated. But now, here's the effects on aquatic ecosystem. What's an aquatic ecosystem? Water, lakes, rivers, things like that. So we lose, the water gets more acidic, things tend to lose its tolerance for that. And jelly-like fish eggs are broken down. Um, it messes up enzymes in the water. Um, you can cause a shock that kills the fish and a shock would be like what happens in the swimming pools when they need to clean them is they dump a bunch of hydrochloric acid in there and then sometimes aluminum gets released into the lake and suffocates the fish and anything below a 4.5 kills all the fish in the lake recordings back on let's keep moving now Here's what can happen to buildings and statues made out of marble and limestone. It can break them down. So here's where this statue started. Here's what it looks like today. And it basically dissolves the rock. One of the tests in geology for limestone is to put hydrochloric acid on it. If it bubbles, then you know it is limestone. But that'll bring us to our point of how is limestone lakes not as acidic? So basically what you want here is the acid breaks down the limestone and the marble. I haven't seen it too much here. I the um Byron Center Historical Society or museum over there is a limestone building. There are not too many limestone buildings I've seen in Michigan, but where I grew up in Illinois, we had limestone quarries, so a lot of churches, the post office, a lot of the buildings are made of limestone block. 
one of the the college I went to has its administration building was made out of big blocks of limestone. Ready to move on? Let's keep going. Now, you don't have to write these down, but here's some of the places that are being damaged by acid rain. Anybody know where the Taj Mahal is? What country? India. India. Very good. And where is the Parthenon? Greece. Greece. Good job, Chris. And so these are all made out of limestone or stone that is susceptible to being destroyed by acid rain. Moving along. Statue of Liberty. It's base, not necessarily the top. Now, what's the top of the Statue of Liberty made out of? Copper. And the copper is just reacting with the air. Anytime you see um, green metal, that's copper. A lot, of, a lot of domes of state capitals, courthouses, everything are made out of copper and they turn green. Um, people use copper gutters on their house if they can afford them. That way they don't break down. And then at the Acropolis, which is also in, in Greece, the faces and the detail is wearing off the statues that are there. Now, the main human effects on from acid rain are increased bronchitis and asthma. And I'll now, here we go. Explain why lakes with limestone or calcium carbonate experience less adverse effects from acid rain than granite beds. And here's why, guys, girls. What is limestone to start with? Limestone is a sedimentary rock. So here's, I'll underline what you need to write. Limestone, sedimentary rock. Um, it's made up of fragments of marine organisms. Marine means ocean. And it is a form of calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate is the main ingredient in antacid. So, if you have the rocks of a lake made out of calcium carbonate and you put acid in it, it neutralizes it. So it will stop it from having as big effect as if you were in a granite lake. And we'll talk about granite here in a second and we'll be almost done. Now, here's what limestone looks like. If you go to Illinois, you'll see a lot of white limestone. The limestone around here has got a yellow color to it, um, just based on where it was formed. Now granite, and this is the difference, here's granite. Granite is a different kind of rock. It is an intrusive igneous rock, which means it comes up from the earth as magma. It never becomes lava because it stays underground. And it's made up of quartz minerals. All right. So I'll slide this over. And it has all kinds of different colors, white, pink, gray. And it depends where it comes from, but you can find granite all over the world, all kinds of different kinds of it. And you probably have some in your house someplace. Up here. Now, quartz. Key, the key, one of the key ingredients in granite is sand, basically. And sand does not react with acids. If it does, it gets dissolved by the acid. It does not neutralize it. So it won't... 
neutralize the acid. Whoa. Sand, the main ingredient in granite, won't neutralize acid. Everybody good to go? All right. So that's it.